Just music in general, it is the embodiment of all the emotions of life. Joy, sorrow, despair, exhilaration. And to learn to play this music is not so easy. When someone goes to a symphony concert and, and hears great music from the past, and if they grow up listening to this music, they gain a wonderful appreciation for it and love for it because it just touches your soul. When I first saw very small children playing amazingly difficult repertoire uh, at the age of seven or eight, I saw that there is something to this method. I'm the founder and director of the Centenary Suzuki School. I've had several families tell me that the Centenary Suzuki School is one of their favorite things about Shreveport, and that makes me so happy to hear. I went one summer to the American Suzuki Institute where Dr. Suzuki himself was doing the teacher training. It was very inspiring to see this man who started a program in Japan and brought it here and it's caught on like wildfire um, and it's really changed the, the course of music in the United States. I think the kind of premise behind the Suzuki method is the idea of using your ears uh, to pick up music in the same way that you use your ears to pick up language. I think the, the real magic behind it is this imitation of the ear because I think from the time, you know, when, when you're, we're all young and when we're babies, we're good at imitating things and that's, that's how we pick up the language we speak. So why not use that same uh, skill that we all have, that innate skill to learn music? You have to actually learn Suzuki method as a young child. Suzuki theorized that kids learn from our product of their environment. And so when music is uh, a part of their normal routine, they, um, they tend to pick it up. They don't think it's unusual. Music is a, a part of my heritage. My father fled Innsbruck, Austria, seven weeks before Crystal Night in 1938, when the Nazis came into power and took over Austria. His parents had been thrown into the Inn River uh, in the middle of the night. The Nazis had come knocking on the door looking for my father and his brother. and. They took them off and, and threw them in the river and they pretended that they had drowned. And he had to smuggle the instruments that were his family's uh, into Switzerland in Tahiti. Dad was able to go back on a cargo boat through the Baltic Sea into France and then back into Switzerland to retrieve the instruments and had a great big wooden box made for them and they were shipped to this country. We have several of those instruments. The instrument that my son plays was my father's cello and it's 200 years old. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. And I guess when I really fell in love with music is when I went in high school to the Swanee Summer Music Center, a music camp. And uh, we played Mahler and Dvorak under conductors from Cleveland and many orchestras. And I, I just loved it and knew I wanted to major in it. And um, it was that summer also that I fell in love with a young man there who was at the uh, breakfast line. 
very romantic place. We were in the cafeteria line. I shed a big smile, and she was already uh, clearly enthused about music. I asked what she was doing that afternoon, and she said she was uh, playing in the symphony for the uh, festival. They were playing a Mahler symphony. So I said, well, maybe I'll come. We have been married 40 years this summer. So when we moved here, I thought, well, what am I going to do? And I enjoyed playing in the Shreveport Symphony when I, when I first came, but I also knew I wanted to start a program. And when I came here and realized they didn't have anything for young children and no Suzuki program, uh, I called the music stores to find out how much their quarter size violins were. And they said, oh, they don't make them smaller than half size. So I personally bought 16th, 10th, 8th, and quarter size violins to start the program. I bought 10 of them. So that was one issue, is getting violins. But my next issue was to find the students. And I'd only been here a few months, and it was in 1977. And so I made cold calls to people that I didn't know to try to recruit my first 10 students. To be able to get all the things done that she gets done on a regular basis, uh, we just grew up with, we thought it was normal. And then we figured out that it wasn't normal, but it, it's pretty impressive. She told me a funny story that when they first started the Suzuki school, they were short on um, kids. And someone came to the house to sell her siding. She's like, I didn't buy siding, but I, at, the, at the end of it, I'd convinced him to sign up for the Suzuki school and his kid was in the Suzuki school, so. We had a party for a wedding, for the uh, upcoming wedding, um, where I would get married to, to my wife. And in the middle of the party with about 150 people, she said, here's your violin, go play. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. And that, that's how I grew up. It was, you're, you're on the spot, you, you need to be able to perform. And it's really helped me in a lot of things that I've done to, uh, to be able to perform and to not be scared to get out, if you're good at something, to get out in front of uh, people and do it. So many of the students that were in the Suzuki program have joined orchestras. Some have gone on to great heights, including her own son. She was producing, through the Suzuki program, many fine community leaders who went on to become MDs. Music and medicine somehow go together, and so um, physicians love that. Academically, these kids uh, learn discipline. They are achievers. Um, the memorization clearly helps. They probably learn to multitask. And especially as I watch her teach my son, and I think this woman has incredible patience. There's this energy that she brings when there's a frustrating moment when my kid is walking around the room think, you know, wanting to do, think about Power Rangers. Or she can draw him back and she can make him make this beautiful music. While you're just playing the music, there is so much work going on in the brain that we cannot imagine that is happening. When you hear the children all on stage, 150 of them play at the Home for Holidays. And you hear Vivaldi Concerto, or you hear a Christmas festival with all children playing together. It just brings tears to your eyes to see that that many children can all join together and, and make something beautiful. It is a miracle to see a little child that takes a violin and cannot do anything with it in September. And by the end of the year, is playing a little piece and is proud of himself or herself. It's just beautiful to feel like you have an effect on someone's life. The 
The goal is not to create professionals, but to create good citizens. And if a child hears beautiful music and plays it from an early age, he gains sensitivity and endurance and self-discipline and a beautiful heart. And that's what we want to see. We want to give these children something that they can have for a lifetime.